Corneal biomechanical properties are critical for maintenance of health, they contribute to the development and progression of disease, and influence outcomes after refractive surgery. They are also critical for understanding of intraocular pressure and may be considered as an independent risk factor for glaucomatous neuropathy. Biomechanical properties are related to the response of a body to an applied force. Elasticity is the ability of a body to deform with complete reversibility. Elasticity is calculated as the ratio between stress and strain. Stress is defined as the load per cross-sectional area. Strain is the percent change in length and is dimensionless. Young's modulus, also called the tensile elastic constant, is calculated as the slope of the linear region of the measured stress versus strain graph of a material. High elastic modulus means the specimen stretches less and is thereby stiffer. Stiffness is a structural property and Young's modulus is a material property. If a material has a higher Young's modulus, it is also stiffer. However, biological tissues such as the cornea tend to be nonlinear, which makes the determination of Young's modulus more complicated. In order to measure Young's modulus of the cornea, non-physiologic in vitro experiments have been necessary. Elasticity is not time dependent in contrast to viscosity, which is the resistance of a material to flow or deform. Viscoelasticity is related to the presence of both elasticity and viscosity in the same material and therefore has a time dependent component like viscosity. Typically, higher stiffness is associated with faster loads or higher strain rates. There is a wide variation of corneal elastic properties reported in the literature. Ahmed El Sheikh has established standardized experimental techniques and found a gradual increase in stiffness related to age. Hysteresis was coined by Sir James Alfred Ewing, who study magnetic materials. David Luce from Reichert developed the Ocular Response Analyzer, a modified non-contact tonometer that represents the first clinical tool for assessing in vivo corneal biomechanical properties. Corneal hysteresis represents the ability of the cornea to dissipate energy or a measure of the viscous damping of corneal tissue. This is not stiffness and does not represent elasticity. These cartoon simulations provide an easy understanding of the dynamic bidirectional applanation process. Corneal resistance factor is an empirical function also calculated from P1 and P2. There is a negative correlation of CH and CRF with age, and there were no changes in CH one year after collagen crosslinking of the cornea. Thus, there are examples of low CH in both stiff and soft corneas. Interestingly, the study of novel parameters derived from the infrared corneal signal provide parameters that are positively correlated with age. Such parameters are related to the deformation response of the cornea, not with the applanation pressures, as in CH and CRF. The Oculus Corviz ST is a new system that combines an ultra-high-speed Scheinflug camera to image an 8mm horizontal meridian throughout corneal deformation during non-contact tonometry. An experiment was performed using different types of hydrophilic contact lenses mounted on a sealed, tightly controlled, pressurized water chamber. The pressure was set from 0 to 70 mm of mercury with 5 mm of mercury intervals. The deformation amplitude, related to the stiffness of the lens in the system, was tabulated along with other variables. Each lens had a different deformation behavior. The pressure significantly influenced the deformation response. For example, if we look at the stiffest lens, TAN40 at zero pressure, and compare with the most pliable TAN58 at higher pressure, the deformation of the latter is less due to the impact of the pressure on the deformation response. We know corneal properties influence IOP measurements. From this experiment, we can also deduce that the opposite is true. Shown here is a normal, thin cornea measured on both the Corviz, shown at the top, and ORA, shown at the bottom. Note that the deformation is flat in shape, indicating that this cornea is relatively stiff. Shown here is a cornea with keratoconus that has similar thickness to the previous normal cornea. If the two corneas are pseudocolored, 
and then superimposed and synchronized in time during the application of the air puff, one can appreciate the differences in the deformation characteristics. The red keratoconic cornea deforms almost a full corneal thickness more than the normal cornea with similar thickness and similar IOP. This difference is due to the biomechanical properties of each cornea. A clinical study involved one eye randomly selected of 177 patients with tomographically normal corneas, 79 patients with bilateral keratoconus, 20 eyes with normal topographic patterns from cases with very asymmetric keratoconus, and 16 eyes from 16 patients with topographic patterns suspicious of keratoconus, called group KCS, but with documented stability and normal tomography. The intraocular pressure, applanation, and deformation responses were extracted from the Corvis data. Corvis factor 1 was calculated from the combination of these parameters using linear regressions by the brain in order to provide best possible separation of keratoconus and normal subjects. Corvis factor 1 had statistically significant distribution differences between normal and ectatic cases, but no differences were found between the KCS and normals as well as between the form frust keratoconus and keratoconus cases. The visualization of the corneal response to the non-contact air pressure for assessing biomechanical properties enabled enhanced sensitivity to detect ectasia on corneas with normal topography and also were specific for ruling out an ectatic pattern on cases with suspicious topography. These data, combined with corneal tomography parameters that characterize thickness distribution and elevation, provide the ultimate screening for assessing ectasia risk among refractive candidates. Studies involving corneal collagen cross-linking procedures provide evidence of increasing stiffness after the procedure. This case had custom PRK followed by corneal cross-linking. Note the improved topography with regularization and improvement of uncorrected and best corrected vision. Despite thinning caused by the ablation procedure, the deformation characteristics suggest higher stability after the surgery. Corneal biomechanical evaluations have been limited to in vitro laboratory studies as well as theoretical mathematical corneal finite element models. However, assessment of corneal biomechanics has gained definitive momentum in ophthalmology due to the ability to make in vivo clinical measurements. Thank you for your kind attention.